Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. Figured I'd go ahead and do my video on knives and pears. Is the response to that open tag. And unlike Skip, who just had an apple, I actually have a pear. A genuine Bartlett pear, and it's full of knives. <laughs> oh dear. Hey, Tobias, what's going on? Hi, <laughs> oh, Skip. Uh, I didn't hear you coming. Uh, uh huh. Sticking knives and pears. All right, yeah. I'm, I'm sticking knives in a pear. <laughs> Not cool, Tobias. That's a pretty cheap shot at your old hombre here. No, man, I, I, I'm, I'm not making fun of you. That's, I, I was inspired by you, man. That's all. I was just inspired. That's what it is. Oh, yeah. Inspired. Yeah. Inspired. You got some swamp land you want to sell me while you're inspired? Well, you know, I, I, I got all these fruit knives, so I thought, you know what? Stick some fruit knives into a piece of fruit. It'd be a cool thing to do, you know, but... Just give me a second. I can tell you where you can stick that fruit knife. No, seriously, man. Seriously? You want some serious? Here's some serious. Payback's going to be a lot sweeter than that pear you're cutting into. Just think about that for a while while you're playing around with your fruit knives. <laughs> I guess I'm busted. I probably should get him a bottle of Sailor Jerry's before this thing airs. Otherwise, uh, I'm probably toast. <laughs> <laughs> but it's worth it. <laughs> Alright, let's get back to the show. Anyway, so what we got here is we got a uh, a fruit knife or a melon tester. This one's just a cheap one made in China. Uh, and it's got a little fork here so that once you cut up your fruit, you can uh, poke it with the little knife and actually taste it. It's just a, a nice slim blade going on. And this is all stainless steel construction. You can usually find these on eBay for about eight, nine dollars. You see there's made in China. Uh, and the fork is really hard to get out because uh, I don't know if it's bent or what, but one of the tines always catches on the bottom of the blade. And then we got the, uh, oh, let's see. If we pull this one out, I think this one's gonna fall. So let's pull that out and see what happens. Okay, there we have the, uh, Rough Rider Toad Sticker. This one is in the, uh, I don't know if they called it the Purple Swirl or the Blue Swirl or whatever, but I man, that's just pretty colors on there. And you know, look how sharp and pointy that blade is. It's covered with pear juice. Let's wipe off the pear juice. Probably gonna have to rinse all these just in case. I don't think it'll stain them, but you never know. In any case, uh, the uh, Rough Rider Toad Sticker. And, uh, Nice smooth action going on there. Really long slim blade. Got a little wobble there, but it really doesn't affect uh, poking it into a pair. And this one here is by Cutmaster. Uh, yeah, you see there, Cutmaster Stainless. Opposite side, you see China. I think this is from about 15, 20 years ago. I'm not sure. Uh, you got uh, the white celluloid handles. You see it is promoting dull pineapple. And I bet you that would be pretty good for cutting into a pineapple. You got a nice serrated blade going the whole length of it. So definitely um, a good cutter for melons and stuff. Maybe a little too aggressive for cutting up a pear. Uh, really good action on it. These things are not short either. Well, I'll get the uh, measurements at the very end. In any case, uh, dull pineapple by Cutmaster Melon Tester or Fruit Knife. And then... Uh, the last one here is from Rough Rider. Two blades. You've got the uh, long, slender, fine edge blade or plain edge, whichever you want to call it. Notice how it's just a long uh, spear point. And then it's got a shorter secondary blade on here, which is like a sheep foot. Well, no, actually, it also has a point to it, a little bit of a drop point, and also a serrated edge there for cutting through the... Uh, the melon, you know, to cut through the uh, tougher part of the melon, the, the skin, whatever you want to call it. The rind, the rind of the melon or whatever you need to cut it through. But uh, that one here is by Rough Rider. So those are uh, some of my melon testers or fruit knives or whatever you want to call them. I've done a video on those before. 
Uh, that was just having a little fun with <laughs> knives and pears. Now let's go to pears in, or knives in pears, as in P-A-I-R. And uh, trying to match up knives that go together. But let me just get these out of the way real quick. Okay, when I was originally going to do this uh, response to the open tag on a pairing of knives, you know, two knives together, I was really thinking about doing a military fixed blades and a folder that would go with it. Uh, but after watching Skip the Show's uh, pairings of knives, um, well, I was kind of uh, impressed with the way he did it uh, with the various uh, fixed blades and folders. And I thought that might be the direction I would go in instead. And so instead of just sticking with just military knives, I would I would expand my horizons a little bit. All right, I've got uh, seven pairs of knives that I want to show you. Uh, but I got to tell you, the, the first one I'm going to be showing you is one that you saw when uh, Skip did his knife pairings. And so first up, we have the uh, Blackjack International High Roller with the uh, custom sheath that I made. I can see why Skip likes it. I mean, it just, uh, it's got that whole gambler's theme going on with it. A nice little boot knife and everything. And then he also had the, uh, the Lucky Lady Stiletto by Rebel Edge. And, um, uh, oh, come on. Uh, boot daggers and stilettos, do they not go together? It just seems like a great match. And with the gambler theme going on with both of them, it was just, uh, it's a natural, you know, so you got to give the man his props when he chose those two. The, uh, the, the, uh, High Roar by Blackjack International and the Rebel Edge Lucky Lady Stiletto. Just a great pairing. Anyway, enough with, uh, Skip. Let's move on to the six I chose. Let me clear this away. Now, as I mentioned, I was originally going to be doing a bunch of military knives, but all I'm going to be showing is this particular one and a folder that I thought would go well with it. And these are both modern knives. This one came out, uh, I believe, around 2003. This is the Ontario ASEC or Air Cruise Survival and Egress Knife. It comes, uh, it's actually a two-part system. Well, let's get the knife out first. It's got the over-molded rubber handle. Um, you see the blade here, all blacked out. You've got a, a partially serrated blade down here. You've got the wood saw or saw up here that can be used for cutting through canopies. Um, you've got a very stiff point uh, so that you can actually punch holes through canopies in the sides of a, a aluminum aircraft and stuff. You see there, Ontario, USA. Um, ASEC, Pat Pending, USA, and there are no uh, dates on these, at least not on the one I have here. And also it comes with the uh, the secondary tool here, which is um, uh, uh, a cutter for uh, like seat belts and also for cutting through a uh, uh, parachute cord and stuff like that. You've got a little uh, rod here for sharpening the blade. And you got a removable screwdriver tip here. All of this goes together, and that is the ASEC system, uh, along with the uh, nylon sheath we have here with it. And the uh, folding knife that I decided would look really good with this knife, and also perform very well with this knife, is the Victorinox uh, U.S. Military Utility Knife. Uh, this is basically the Trekker. Uh, the same knife that is used by the uh, uh, German military as well as the Swiss Army. All of them use this same knife. Um, the difference is, is the uh, U.S. version is damped U.S. and it also is all blacked out. So the back tools you have on there are your Phillips driver. And you have the uh, punch or all, whichever you want to call it. And your front tools are the can opener. I don't think it would help you get out of a jet, but you never know. And then you've got your uh, cap lifter, screwdriver, wire stripper here. And notice it has a lock on it, 
a liner lock for that. Left-handed liner lock too. And then uh, you also have right here in the back, you have a wood saw. So this wood saw will definitely work better than the saw that you have on the back of the knife here. Though I have tried this, it will actually cut through wood. It will work, but not nearly as effectively as the wood saw that you have with the Victorinox knife here. And then down the middle, you have a one hand opening blade. Um, notice it is serrated at the front, fine edge on the back, and it also has a left hand liner lock going on with it. So uh, that is the pairing that I came up with. And I think that would work pretty well in most survival situations. And uh, I don't know, uh, as both of them are more or less U.S. issue, especially the ASEC knife, it is an issue knife. I'm not sure if this is issued, but I know it is uh, a knife that is available through like the PX and the Class 2 stores and stuff like that. So this was a uh, my first thought of uh, a modern U.S. military knife combo. All right, with that said, let's clear it away and go to the next pairing. Okay, my next uh, selection was for the Boy Scouts, and I went with the L48 Western Boy Scout knife, and this is a, a little bird and trout knife. You see here the Boy Scout logo there, be prepared. Uh, nice blade going on with it. You got the stacked leather handle. Very traditional. Aluminum pommel going on. Um, about an 8-inch knife uh, overall. The handle is probably right 3 and 3 quarters and the blade is about 4 and a quarter or so. It came with a nice little leather sheath and you see the, uh, the, the square knot at the top there. And the Boy Scout logo there. And uh, I thought, what knife would go well with that? Obviously, the first thought most people would have would be the uh, either the Whittler or the um, or the four blade official uh, Boy Scout knife. But what I decided to go with was the Camillus Leader's knife because that looked like the knife of a leader, uh, and this seems to be something that well, it was designed for the leader. Just a nice little. Uh, pen knife. You got a clip blade on one side. See there, Camillus. This is after 1989. This one came out. Uh, and on the other side, you got a pen blade. Really well made knife. It's got the uh, uh, the Jig Delrin handle. You've got the, uh, the Scout uh, symbol there. Uh, obviously, if you notice, there was no official Boy Scout uh, logo on the blade there. I'm not sure why they left it off, but they did. In any case, this was the uh, the leader's knife. And I thought, that makes a really nice looking pairing. So that's why I went with that one. The Boy Scout leader's pair. All right, this next uh, pairing is not a fixed blade and a folder, but actually two folders. But uh, you knew I had to get a large toothpick in here somewhere. And so what I grabbed was my... Uh, Stag Bone Large Toothpick by Queen. This is a USA made Queen from uh, a while back. Um, so the pattern number 20 um, Queen Cutlery Toothpick. So five inches with a four inch blade. And uh, well, just looked nice. And I thought, well, I need something in stag to go with it. And as this is basically your folding bird and trout knife, I needed something else for the outdoors, and that's why I went with my uh, uh, Case Stag Junior Scout. So the Junior Scout and the large toothpick. I think it makes a nice pairing. You got the, uh, the Spear Master Blade, the uh, small can opener. You got the cap lifter and screwdriver over on this side. And then the punch over here. And while this knife uh, is made by Case, or made for Case, it was actually made by Queen for Case. So the two knives are made by the same company, even though this one is Queen Cutlery and this one is Case. 
And, uh, well, they're not exactly the same, but they're pretty close. You got genuine sandbar stag and bone stag on the uh, queen. But I think they make a nice looking collection or a nice little pair for the uh, pocket, you know, for that gentleman's night out in the woods or whatever. I don't know. In any case, that's why I matched those two up. The uh, queen toothpick. And the Junior Scout and Stag. Alright, let's move on to the other ones. Okay, next up is a pair that has been on the channel before. And that is my case desk knife. Notice their office knife. And uh, you see it uh, engraved there. Knife Chats with Tobias. And this blade comes in 154 cm. And it comes with a nice leather sheath that lays on the desk. And it's an office knife, so it's like, you know, used in the office area. And, and this is a knife that I have um, in my upstairs office. And uh, the knife that I matched it up with is a Camillus office knife. Um, so it has the pen blade over here. It's either Camillus. And then it has the eraser blade on the other side over here. The difference between these two is this one has what's uh, referred to as an ivorite handle, which is basically um, celluloid uh, colored to look like ivory. And this one has a natural smooth bone handle. But we also see the uh, intricate office knife markings on there which are very similar. So the knives go together quite well. And this is actually a pairing that I do have and like. So um, <laughs> it is one of those things that you, you look at and go, yep, those two knives definitely go together. Only if somebody else, say Rough Rider, would come out with this kind of office knife pair, that would be terrific. Especially if they were to do them all and uh, the same handle material and offer them as pairs. Okay, my next uh, pairing, I, I figured I really needed to do a set of fish knives, but I wanted to do something a little out of the ordinary. So what I have here are my K-Bar and my um, uh, Fish Priest. Now, the Fish Priest, I do not know who made it. I don't know where it was made or anything, but it is just a really cool uh, knife or club. And what it is there for is so that you can whack the fish on the head and put it out of its misery when you get it on board the boat. So you notice it's got these bumps on both sides here. That's the give it a little added uh, pressure, direct pressure on one spot. But when you unscrew this and open it up, you also got a little blade in there. So it's almost like a paring knife. Um, you could probably use this to cut open a fish or something, but uh, I don't know how well it would be for scaling the fish or anything like that, but um, just depending on the size of the fish, you could probably do a pretty good job on a fish with this little blade. Um, notice also, got brass there. But this seems to be like a, a stainless steel alloy of some kind. Got a little ring on the bat bottom so you can actually tie a lanyard to it if you need to, but definitely a little knocker, a fish knocker or a fish priest. And then what we have here is the K Bar Bally Song or uh, Butterfly Knife. Got the lock down there. You see there the handle is approximately five and a half inches long, so we know that the knife is going to be approximately 10 and a half, 11 inches long once you get it open but it is indeed a fish knife as you can tell by the fish scaler on the top there and that's a pretty aggressive fish scaler you could actually cut with that so it's almost like a serrated edge but how cool is that you know a, a fish butterfly knife a fisherman's butterfly knife and so i thought that would make a really good pairing uh, definitely old school both of them are old school knives there um, because this one is from the, the 1930s. Um, I don't know when this was from, but I would assume that probably the 1950s or 60s. So, and then for the last pairing is really another desk set. And that's, uh, 
the one for down here. Uh, you've got this knife here, or you got the letter opener here, and on the back side here you have a uh, a nice little clip blade. And if you can tell there, this is from Imperial, um, and it was made in the USA. It has uh, basically an imitation wood grain cover there. Uh, but uh, the knife that I have to go with that is an equal in pen knife. Uh, and again, knife chats with Tobias. This is made in China. But uh, this is actual wood in this case. You got the uh, spear blade there and then a small pen blade over here. And so I thought that makes a nice pairing too. Uh, might have to get that marked knife chats with Tobias too. But in any case, there were my um, pairs of knives uh, as opposed to pairs, P-E-A-R, or knives in P-E-A-R. In any case, hope you enjoyed that. Stick around, I'll also put a few slides at the end. Just for the record, Undertaker 3 Bowie, Pear. How hard was that? Bias needs to take a lesson from the pro when it comes to cutting up fruit. Been doing this all my life. I know how to cut up fruit. Good pear. Good knife. Fun knife. Let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with Tobias. I really do appreciate it and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.